So guys, I've given you the permission to record the session. You can just click on the recording button um, where it is written record and you will start recording the session. <clears throat> Uh, the reason is that you can have your own record uh, of uh, the lecture in, in case one day you want to be able to go through it once again, and then it makes it easier uh, for you guys to go through this session. So what are we looking at today? Uh, last week, um, we have looked at uh, the, uh, in chapter one, uh, we have looked at uh, different types of organizations, and that's basically what you looked at uh, last week. So today, we are going to be looking at the activities performed by the finance professionals. So what are the activities that you perform? So you guys as accountants or finance managers, there are those activities that you are exp actually expected to perform. And what are those activities that are performed uh, by the finance function in order to fulfill their roles? That is basically what we are going to be concentrating on today. We are going to be looking at uh, just give me one second and then we'll get into it. Okay, guys, <clears throat> let's get into it. So we, like I said, we'll look at uh, the activities that are performed by the finance uh, by the finance function. And uh, so uh, looking at the activities performed by the finance function in order to fulfill their what? In order to fulfill their roles. What are the activities that the finance function will have to perform in order to fulfill their roles? So that is very, <clears throat> very critical and very, very important uh, for us to look at that. So let's um, uh, continue guys and look at the introduction. Uh, to this. Um, so in, in terms of, uh, so this is basically uh, the, uh, what we are going to cover, the activity performed by the uh, finance professional. Um, uh, that is what we are going to be looking at. And so in terms of the introduction, the introduction says in the previous chapter, we discussed about the roles of the finance function, understanding how the finance function enables, shapes, and narrates uh, value creation. That is what we looked at. We looked at the activity, the roles that are played by the finance function to enable uh, the organization to create value and also to shape how the organization uh, create value and also to how um, we uh, value is actually narrated. So we've actually looked at that. And so um, in chapter two, we are going to look at uh, the um, finance activities from the framework to impact. So this is the thing that we are going to be concentrating on, guys. Uh, the examiner is going to be interested in asking this thing. So the concentration on chapter two is going to be based on the finance activities. So this is going to be based on uh, the finance activities. Uh, this is going to be based on the uh, finance activities, but the concentration uh, is the information to impact framework. So we are looking at finance activities from the information to impact framework. So the information to impact framework is what guide us as to what activities the finance function performed. So the activities that the finance function performed is going to be represented by the information to impact framework. Right, so it says the structure of the finance function and activities that the finance function performed can be best understood in the context of the basic finance activities that form the backbone of their work <clears throat> of financial professionals. What it actually means is that, you know, we can understand the activities that is performed by the finance professionals by looking at the information to impact framework. You understand what I'm saying? So, which means it is summarized as part of the information to impact framework. So that is the guide to the activities performed by the finance profession. So let's look at what comprises the information to, um, 
uh, what really is it that we are going to be looking at? Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> sorry, just one minute. Okay, I think I'm there now. Okay, so the information to impact framework uh, is actually made up of what? That is what we need to be able to look at. So let's get into it. So this is the information to impact framework. What it actually means about the information to impact framework is, is that the finance professionals, they, the first thing that they do is they assemble, okay? So they assemble, what they assemble here is they assemble information. We are going to look at that. So it's gathering of information, it's assembly of information. So what we do is we assemble what? We assemble information, which means as accountants, as finance professionals, we gather information. So when we gather information, what do we do with this information? So when with this information, we need to be able to analyze that information. So we assemble information, we gather information, we analyze that information. After we analyze this information, what is the reason for analysis of information? So we analyze this information, right, in order to have an insight, right, in order to gather an insight. When we talk about an insight, in order to have an understanding of what is happening within the organization, that is having and what <clears throat> that is having an insight, which is an understanding of what should what is happening within the organization. And then once you have an understanding, what is the next thing that you are going to do? Obviously, you are going to advise. So uh, as accountant, when we have information, what do we do with this information? We analyze it. When we analyze the information, what do we do? We have an understanding of the information. So we advise, right? So that is basically the idea. And then once we advise, why are we advising? We're advising so that you can influence management to make certain decisions. So we advise to influence. You understand the point, advise to influence. We advise to influence uh, uh, management to make the decision. So management now, when we influence them, what is management going to do? Management is going to apply it in order to make a what? To make strong decisions. Those strong decisions is known as an impact. So when an organization makes a good decision, it will have an impact to the what? It will have an impact on the organization, right? It will have uh, a strong impact on the what? It will have a strong impact on the organization. So that is basically the idea. You get the point. So we assemble information, and once we assemble the information, we analyze it in order to have a better understanding, which is an insight. Once we have an insight, we advise management or we influence management um, to influence them to make certain what? To apply what you provided to them in order to make certain decisions. So the whole thing there is could be classified as could be under what you call acumen. Okay, so that is basically the idea. So the whole chapter will be talking about this diagram. That is what you're going to be talking about throughout the whole chapter. We'll be talking about that what? We'll be talking about this diagram. Okay, so <clears throat> now the uh, issue, so we are gonna be talking about uh, each of these aspects that we have talked about. It said the finance professional, the basic activities are classified into what? The basic activities are classified into five A's. So that is the five A's, assemble, analyze, advise, apply, acumen. Assemble information, analyze to provide an, uh, an insight, advise, <coughs> right, in order to influence, we apply in order to come up with an impact. That is basically the idea. So we'll take each of these one by one. The first thing is to assemble information. That is the first thing. Remember on the information to impact framework, the first thing is to what? The first thing is assembling of what? Assembling of information, which means we are going to assemble information. Assembling of information. So what is it that we mean 
by assembling of information. So when we assemble information, we collect data uh, to prepare information about the organization. That is the collection of data about the organization. So finance professional, they collect and assemble data from a range of internal and external sources, right? So the data, it actually flows into the organization, but when it flows into the organization, it actually flows from internal and external what? Uh, internal and external sources. So we gather this information from outside the organization and from inside the organization. Now, once we, uh, once we get this information, what are we going to do with it, all right? So to become useful, the organization, uh, uh, in the organization, the data need to be turned into information, right? So there's a difference between data and information, right? Data is unprocessed and information, it is the data that has been processed. So what does that mean? So means is that when when uh, when we get a data comes from inside and outside it is um, um is uh, raw facts that has not been processed but when it processes it becomes information so for it to be useful to the organization it has to be information so once data is received what are we going to do we are going to process it into information so once it becomes information then it is useful, which means we can now be able to what? We can now be able to use it uh, to make certain decisions. So it's now useful and can be used now to make certain what? It can now be used to make certain decisions. You get the point. So gather the information uh, from internal and external sources, process it, right? To, uh, uh, so that it, we can convert it from uh, being data into information. We convert it from data into what? Into information, right? So this is what actually happened. So when we when we are processing um, data, we the, the the process of processing is we clean the data. Um, uh, by cleaning data, we are looking at um, identifying incomplete and inaccurate or irrelevant data, then replace, modify, or delete it, right? and also connecting different sources of data. That is very important. So we, we, we are saying once the data is going to be received, we process it by what? By cleaning the data or by deleting any other information that is not necessary, right? Um, we, we are given examples of assembled information. So assembled information would be management information in an accessible format for managers. Now that is assembled information. Accounts and return prepared in a prescribed format for external reporting. It's now classified as assembled information, which means that is now information that is put together. For example, if, if when we talk about a company's financial statement, a company's financial statement is already classified into this category, right? A company's financial statement is already classified into this one. It's already classified into uh, this category as assembled information. Now, assembled information is meaningful information, right? Data that has been processed into meaningful information, now it becomes assembled information. You get the point. So now it becomes assembled what? Now it becomes assembled information. Okay, so... <clears throat> Now, the next aspect that we need uh, to look at um, is um, analyze analysis for insight. Remember, we are going through the framework. Now, assemble uh, information. We have done that. Now, we are doing analysis for insight. That is the next step that we are looking at uh, is analysis for what? The next step is analysis for insight. Now, what is to analyze? We analyze um, what are we analyzing and what are we trying to achieve, right? <clears throat> we want to try and provide insight for the users by analyzing the information. So us as finance professionals, we analyze both financial and non-financial information. Financial, non-financial information. Let me repeat that. We analyze both financial 
and non-financial information, right? We analyze both financial and non-financial, what? We analyze both financial and non-financial information. And now, uh, from that, uh, basically what we are saying, what are an example of financial information? Financial information is, for example, our sales uh, information is financial, revenue is financial, our purchases uh, is financial. So anything that is uh, on, on a, from a financial perspective, sales, revenue, uh, revenues uh, or, or sales, uh, our purchases, our cost, they are all financial. So we'll be analyzing the information from a financial perspective. And then we also look at analyzing information from a non-financial perspective. So we can also analyze information from a non-financial perspective. So from a non-financial perspective, we can look at, um, for example, customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is analyzing the commons information from a non-financial point of view. Quality, if you analyze it in terms of quality, quality is non-financial. All right, customer satisfaction, quality, uh, the level of innovation, it is non-financial. So that is um, analyzing of information into both financial and non-financial, all right? And uh, why do we analyze information? The reason why we analyze information is mainly uh, the reason for analyzing information is to be able to draw out patterns. And, um, and relevant insight for those who use the information. We want to be able to bring it out something so that those that uses the information, it becomes easier for them after we have analyzed on their behalf. So that is uh, basically the issue. So you can analyze the figures so that you can bring to the attention of the users that this is the meaning of the figures that is uh, um, uh, that we have. So that is basically the analyzing for insight, right? So this is uh, where the point where we do a lot of questioning of the information. So that analysis for insights, that is questioning of the what? That is more like you are questioning of the information, right? You are questioning of the information. And uh, then uh, the other part that we need forward to look at, we, we have gone to the second part, we are going to the third part of the information to impact framework. So we look at the third part. So the third part here is advising to influence, right? Advising to what? Advising to influence. So what, what does that mean? Who are we advising now that we have uh, uh, an insight of the information. What do we do? We advise, who do we advise? Now we advise management to make certain decisions. We advise management to make certain decisions, right? So, so this is a point where we will be looking at communicating insights, right? So we'll be communicating insight to influence the users communicating of insights in order to influence what? <clears throat> communicating of insights in order to influence the users. So, <coughs> sorry guys. So finance professionals then communicate this insight. So once we have an understanding of the information and insight, we communicate them to management. Uh, contribute to, uh, contribute an objective and responsible uh, perspective, right? To influence organization decision making. Like we say, we advise top management so that they can be able to make certain decisions. You understand the point? Now we advise, uh, especially the management accountant is well positioned to be able to do that. The management accountant will then now need to, be able to advise management on a certain uh, direction that should be taken. So management can be influenced to be able to do that. So this is an area where we actually saying we are developing what? We are developing solutions. So this is the area where we develop what? We are developing the solutions, right? So management accountant, they are well positioned to get to that point. And then from there, we get to third point number four. Point number four, what we look at in point number four, let me do this. Uh, point number four, what exactly are we talking about? <clears throat> applying for impact, 
and then we look at acumen. So we need to be able to apply for what? Apply for uh, impact. And what do you mean by apply for impact? Remember we said we develop uh, solutions for managers and then um, uh, the next point, uh, that is point number, uh, sorry about that guys. Uh, point number four, uh, we now apply for impact, which means we uh, the uh, information that we have actually given uh, to top management now support the implementation of decisions to achieve the desired impact. So now we have influenced the managers to make certain decisions. So when they'll be implementing those things, now is now they are applying for impact. They are now executing. They are now putting the decision into effect. Implementation, right? Putting the decision into effect, that is implementation. Sorry, guys, can you give me one minute, please?
All right, sorry guys. Um, I was actually saying, okay, let's continue guys. You know, I was actually saying that um, now the fourth point is applying for impact uh, where we do the execution. And uh, normally when we talk about uh, uh, this point, finance professionals apply the information to harness value for the organization. This is where we come up with all the information that we've collected and we've fed management. They are now used for strategic plans. Uh, they'll be used for strategic plans. Uh, so the information will also be able to be used for budgeting and resource allocation. Could also be used for performance uh, measures and also for performance reviews. So this is where we actually saying we are deploying what? We are deploying of the solution. So this is the way the uh, deployment of solutions is. We are now deploying the solutions in order to make an impact. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's, the next one is acumen. Acumen is uh, where all the activities that we are talking about, they are actually connected together. So with acumen is connect the different activities to each other. Um, so everything that we have talked about, they have to be connecting together in order to uh, make an impact to the what? In order to make an impact to the organization. So these activities that we have talked about will also be explained in chapter four. In chapter four, we are going to be um, talking a little bit more about these activities. So we are going to be talking about them in chapter four. Um, so this is uh, um, the um, this is just just your understanding. Um, just to understanding, can you tell me something, guys? Yeah, let's let's do a bit of some just a, a small exercise uh, that we can be able to do. Yeah, uh, let's do a small exercise. Yeah, uh, you need to be able to tell me. Um, we have got information to impact framework, right? I want you to match uh, the activity and the description. Uh, are we together? Activity and description. So if I say advice to influence which of the description will match advice to influence, right? That is what you want to do. So let's go for it. So it says now using the information to impact framework, match the following description to the activities they are describing and put them into the correct order, right? Uh, put them into the correct order, right? So, um, which one is the first there? Which one is the first activity according to the information to impact framework? Which one is the first activity? Assembling information. Assembling information. And so we actually say, okay, one assembly information. Um, so it matches with which description do you think? Processing the time to meaningful and useful information. Uh, processing data into meaningful, uh, useful information. Uh, Phineas, do you agree with that? Um, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so this is one. It connects with one there. The second one, what is the second activity? Mm, analyzing, for in, uh, analyzing for insights. Analyzing for insight. Where is this? Where is this? Okay, so assembly information, analyzing for insight. Yes, I agree. That's point number two. It matches with what? Using, in, <laughs> using in information. No, 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 not that one. Um, interpreting <laughs> information. information. Is, <laughs> It's discussion is interpreting information to find pattern and CN that may not have been previously known. Okay. And Phineas, you agree with that? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this is our second part. Okay. What are the third one? The third activity? Mm, advising to influence. Advice to influence. So yes. Advice to influence. Uh, that is the third one. I agree with you there. So which one goes with advice to influence? Advice to influence. First um, one. Mm -hmm. 
Is it it? Using information to create a value. <laughs> <laughs> Using information to create value. I, 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 do I agree with that? Agree with that? Huh? <laughs> for me, it's the first one provide insight that's be useful for future decision. Yes, providing insights. Uh, because now, when you're advising to influence, you are providing insights. You are making the, the management understanding. Yes, so this is three here. Um, and uh, then uh, the next one is what? Applying for um, impact. Applying for impact, yes. Applying for impact, uh, which one do you? Um, applying for impact, so that is developing solutions to, um, Okay, developing uh, uh guys, let's um, let's see. Let's look info, at this. Using info. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Um we are, we are talking about applying to uh for impact, yes, applying for impact, what do we do now. Um, so that yes. is uh developing solutions uh to influence the decision made by the organization, all right. Um, if we go back on developing solution, uh, let me take you back, guys. Uh, mm. Sort of about this. Uh, I, I want to take you a little bit back so that you can have a, a bit of understanding of that. We are developing solutions um, here. Yeah? So if you look at developing solutions, you can see uh, that developing solutions, it's about applying for impact. We are developing what? What I was saying there is developing the solution. So when you are developing the solutions, you are developing the solutions to achieve a desired impact, right? Uh, that's developing the solution uh, that is applying for impact. Okay, interesting. This is the typical type of uh, the question that comes. They say drag and, drag and drop or match one and two, three and four, five. So you need to be able to know uh, picking up the correct what? Picking up the correct answer or matching. Uh, the correct stage and the correct answer so it's very important that we need to know to know that um and uh so the last one is acumen so you know what acumen is always about creation of value overall creation of value so acumen is about using information to create value for the organization so we are just saying all these stages if we put them together what are we trying to achieve we are trying to create value for the organization. Are we, are we together, guys? So we, we are um, assembling information. Uh, we are you know, analyzing information, assembling information, analyzing, advising to influence, you know, applying for impact, acumen uh, is now the overall of the four. If we take advice to influence, assembling information, applying for impact and analysis for insight. All these things, all these activities, if we put them together, they give us what you call the acumen. So what you would be trying to do is to create value for the, for the whole organization. So that is basically the idea. Okay, let's uh, continue guys. It was just uh, an exercise. So this is basically uh, the information to impact framework we have already talked about the information to impact framework it's more like a repeat of the information uh to impact framework uh we start with assemble of information we analyze to provide insight advice to influence and then apply or execute to impact so basically each of these have got each stage is associated with what will be happening so when you're assembling information it's more like you are reporting information. You are getting information, reporting information. And then at this point, uh, in um, analysis to insight, you'll be questioning. You want to be able to you question information. What information should be included? What information should be excluded? What should be deleted and so forth, right? When you're influenced, you are developing solutions, right? Developing solutions and deploying solutions. There are two different things. Developing solutions uh, is uh, 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 when you're influencing, you are developing solutions, but then you also have to deploy solutions. So it's very important guys that you need to be able to understand 
uh, each of these uh, 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 at each at at each stage. There, it's very important uh, that you need to, be able to understand that. Okay, guys, uh, let's actually move on to the next uh, aspect um, here. Uh, so uh, you you understand more of this when we'll be doing revision. It's going to be very interesting uh, there. So. Um, so it says moving from left to right, there is a shift in emphasis, right? So when you are starting gathering information, right? Gathering information uh, and also analysis for insight, it's more like we are looking at accounting and governance. So it's more like we concentrate on figures. It's more like figures in most cases. We gather information uh, and analyzing that information. That is more like accounting and governance. So this is where we are more like looking at financial and corporate reporting, management accounting uh, also takes place there, regulatory compliance, risk management, corporate governance. This is at this point where we are gathering information and when you are analyzing that information, it's going towards accounting and governance. But as we progress with the information to impact framework, we're now going to go to guidance and so we, we move on to uh, guidance and management, which means guidance and management now is now we are uh, trying to helping the organization to focus, analyze and make decisions. So that's guidance and management. So it goes towards uh, that, it goes towards guidance and managing uh, uh, and, and uh, helping the manage, managers to make certain what? Uh, helping the managers to make certain decisions. Right, and uh, then we also need to be able to look at source of data. This is simple and easier to understand. This is very easy to understand, guys. Sources of information. Remember we said when we are gathering information, right? Information that we gather, we gather from two different sources. We have agreed that information is gathered from internal sources and also is gathered from external sources, right? Internal sources and external sources. <clears throat> so let's try to understand what are the internal sources of information and what are the external sources of information. So internal sources of information and external sources of information. So let's look at internal what? Internal sources. So internal sources of information or internal sources of data may be uh, taken from a variety of areas such as in, inside the organization, Accounting records, right? We can talk, take it from accounting records, uh, payroll um, data, such as the number of employees and the hours worked, um, production um, data, such as the number of rejected units, sales and marketing data. You can actually see this is internal information, right? Accounting records, payroll data, production information, sales and marketing information, these are all in turn, right? We get them from inside the organization. So these ones are what? These ones are all internal uh, to the organization, right? And then, uh, so these are just examples, guys. There's a reading here uh, that you need to go through, but uh, this is just the same things that uh, I was talking about there, internal sources, you know, uh, sales ledger, uh, is, is example of internal sources, which gives us the number of value of invoices, volume of sales, uh, value of sales, and so forth. Uh, purchase ledger, number and value of invoices, value of purchases, payroll system, number of employees, hours worked, wages earned. So all these are examples of internal what? All these are examples of internal uh, information, right? It's an example of internal info. Uh, internal information. It's easy to understand. If the examiner says which one of the following is part of the internal information, you can tell uh, that this is actually internal information. But when you talk about external sources, right? <clears throat> external sources, what exactly are we talking about if we talk about, um, what are we talking about if we talk about external sources? So when we talk about external sources, we are talking about Example, um, information that we get outside the organization is external. So we, 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 when we look at them, 
we actually say these are part of external sources. For example, uh, information that we get from our suppliers is external. Information that we get from um, customers is external. From suppliers, we talk about, um, for example, product prices is external, right? Uh, and also information that we get from customers, uh, for example, product requirement and product sensitivity, we get it from customers, newspapers and journals in the internet. Also provide with other information as well, newspapers, journals, the internet actually provide with other, what? Uh, they actually provide with other information. The government also provide uh, other information as well. So the government is also can be a, a, a provider uh, information as well, right? So that basically the idea. But uh, you know, external sources has got uh, its own disadvantages. Uh, when talk about external sources of information, it's got its own disadvantage. But it says external data may be limited in its usefulness to finance professionals. The limitation of using externally generated data. So there are limitations that has got to do with the use of externally what? Uh, generated data. Um, why is it, you know, not much usefulness to use external data, right? Because one, we actually say external data may not be what? Uh, may not be accurate, right? External data may not be accurate. That's one of the reasons external data may not be accurate. External data may be out of date. So external data may be out of date and the company uh, publishing the data may not be a reputable uh, uh, company. So if you take uh, other companies information that might not be reputable, you see, so other companies information might not be what? Other commons information might not be uh, reputable, right? So might not be reputable. And external data may not meet the exact needs of the business. So it might not really meet the exact needs of the business because uh, your company and uh, the external company, you know, might not have the same information. So you might use the information which does not suit your own organization. And also it might be difficult to gather external data, example from customers or competitors, because some customers and competitors, they are not willing to provide uh, the information. So they might not be willing to be able to share or to provide what, uh, to provide information, right? We are given examples. Uh, there's another reading here, guys, uh, on examples of um, another reading. Uh, based on examples of external sources of information. You can just go through them. Suppliers, uh, what is uh, information that you can be able to get from your suppliers uh, and um, uh, newspaper journals, you know, what kind of information that you can be able to get from there, the government, customers, employees, banks, and so forth, uh, that. Let's look at uh, information. <clears throat> what is it that we call information? right so information as we said that uh, when data comes into the organization when you gather data the data has to be what to be processed we are, we have agreed we gather data but the data that we gather need to be processed right that is what we agree so when the data is actually processed uh it is actually processed into what you call information so data is processed into information Data is processed into uh, uh, information. So what we are going to do now is we are now going to say, what is the characteristics of good information? Characteristics of good information. What does good information should look like, right? So we look at good information. What is the characteristic of good information? So the characteristics of good information, one, it should be accurate. So good information should be accurate, all right? Uh, you know, when the information that we can be able to use uh, for the purpose of decision-making, it should be accurate information. Secondly, 
information should be timely, all right? So the information is, should be what? Information should be timely. When you say timely of information, what exactly are we saying? We are just saying that it should be provided on time. You know, as accountants, in most cases in, as an accountant, we need to make sure that you provide timely information. So timely information is that information that is provided on time. We normally work with targets. And so we need to make sure that the information that is provided are timely information. And also it should be relevant, right? Relevance in this case, what does that mean? When we talk about relevance, uh, we are just saying it should fit the purpose in which it is actually provided. And therefore it should be relevant. It should also be concise, which means um, it needs to be able to continue, uh, it has to contain sufficient detail uh, in order to be effective to management, right? It has to contain sufficient information. And lastly, it should be cost what? It should be cost effective. So cost effective meaning uh, that it should be obtained or it should be processed at the lowest cost possible. It should be obtained or processed at the lowest cost what? <clears throat> at the lowest cost possible. That is basically the idea. So when, you, when we talk about the uh, characteristics of good information, it should be accurate, it should be timely, it should be relevant, it should be concise, and it should be cost effective. These are the characteristics of good what? Uh, these are some of, some of the characteristics of good uh, information, right? And also we need to uh, look at, uh, you can use the word accurate uh, to uh, just shorten the characteristics of good information. As we are given here, uh, let's look a little bit about it. So an illustration that is actually given here. I say uh, illustration one, qualities of management reports should be accurate, right? So we actually said the management reports should be what? should be accurate, right? And uh, uh, what does that mean? Um, we are given an example of a characteristic and also we are given an explanation of each of these uh, characteristics. So we are given a characteristic and we are given the explanation it says, for example, A means accurate. Uh, figures should add up and there should be no typos or there should be no errors um, in that. So that is basically the idea. Um, and also we actually saying information should be complete. Complete meaning uh, that reports should include, so uh, complete mean we say the figures should add up, you know, complete means report should include all information that is needed by the readers of the report should contain all the information that is needed by the readers of the report. It should be cost beneficial, right? Cost beneficial means the benefit of having the information must be greater than the cost of providing the information. So meaning we need to make sure that the information that we acquire, they are more benefit than the cost. So there should be a higher, uh, I mean, a higher benefit compared to the what? compared to the cost. Uh, if the cost is higher than the benefit, there's, so there's no need for us to be able to acquire that information or to process that information. Understandable, uh, meaning that uh, the readers of the report must be able to understand the content and use, uh, and use the contents to fulfill their needs, right? Use the contents to be able to fulfill their what? To be able to fulfill their needs. Presentation should be clear and in line with the best practice. So the presentation should be clear and should be in line with the best what? It should be in line with the best practice. It should also be relevant, all right? It should be what? It should be relevant, which means information that is not needed by uh, the readers of the report should be omitted. We only need information that could suit uh, that, that you could suit uh, the papers sort or of fit the papers. That is what you mean by relevant, right? <clears throat>
And then uh, uh, the other part is, uh, remember we said accurate, uh, we still have got to, to continue with A, T, and E. So adaptable, that is another characteristic of good information. It should be adaptable. And what do you mean by adaptable? Which means the output reports should have the capability of being adapted to meet the needs of the users of the organization in order to meet the, the, the needs of the users of the uh, the need of the users of the organization. It should be timely. Uh, like I said already that it has to be provided on what? Uh, it has to be provided on time. Information should be provided on time. If it's needed uh, in two weeks time, it has to be provided in that so that uh, it can benefit those that are expected to be benefited on time. It should be easy to use. So information should be presented in a form recommended by the industry, right? Information should be presented in a in in uh, should be presented in a form recommended by the industry or the organization's best practice. Recommended by the industry or the organization's best what? Uh, organization best practice. So it should not be too long, it should be easy to use. Information should not be overload. Otherwise, the person that receives it will not be able to process it well. So that is basically uh, the point. So these are the characteristics. You can just put it in a form of what? In a form of accurate, right? Describing um, that's accurate. Let's look at uh, what you call technology in this. You know, uh, in these days, uh, you can't separate much uh, information and technology because uh, when we are analyzing uh, uh, data. Normally, we use uh, the when you are capturing data, gathering information, or when you are assembling information, and when you are analyzing information, technology plays a key role. Technology plays a very important role in capturing of the information. So, technology will play a key role. In capturing the information, machines and automation can now do the collection of data much more effectively and much more efficiently than humans. You know, guys, when you are capturing information, uh, normally these things they are done by the machine, capturing, processing, you know, converting data into information. So machines can be able to do these things. So technology plays a very key role. Uh, into capturing of information. Now, information can now be produced at a press of a button in real time. So in real time, uh, we can be able to uh, process this information in real what? Uh, process the information in real time, right? Um, so that's the importance of information. There's also what we call um, So we, okay. And then let's look at the types of information, right? Uh, what type of information do we gather? Because we need now to categorize what? We need now to categorize information. Remember we said uh, finance professionals, what they do is they assemble information, they analyze the information and now, what type of information that we are going to get out of this process? So let's uh, divide the information into non-financial and financial information. So we have got non-financial information and also we have got financial uh, information, right? Non-financial information and financial information. Now, the non-financial information should further be categorized and uh, we further categorize the non-financial information into quantitative and qualitative. So we have got non-financial information quantitative and non-financial information qualitative, right? Non-financial information quantitative, non-financial information qualitative. All right, guys, sorry guys, one minute.
Okay, so we divide information into non-financial and into financial. And with non-financial, we've got non-financial is classified into quantitative and qualitative. Now, let's uh, try to categorize uh, that into much detail. So financial and non-financial, I think is easier. Financial, um, uh, financial information is more like when we talk about the revenue, cost, our purchases and, and so forth, it's financial. But when you look at non-financial, we talk about, for example, customer uh, satisfaction, uh, quality, innovation, and so forth. They are non-financial. But when you look at this non-financial, the non-financial should be further split into quantitative and qualitative. So we need to uh, understand when we say non-financial, quantitative information and qualitative information, what is the difference between quantitative information and qualitative information? <clears throat> quantitative and qualitative information. So let's start by quantitative, quantitative, right? So when look at quantitative, this is information that can normally be expressed in numerical terms information that can normally be uh, uh, expressed in numerical terms, all right? Um, we are given now that financial information will be quantitative, all right? Uh, we also have financial information which can be quantitative, for example, sales information. Non-financial information will be partly quantitative. Number of complaints is quantitative because in figure terms, number of complaints. So we can say number of complaints is 50 right it's already quantitative it is quantitative but it is non-financial because number of complaints is not financial but it's quantitative because it is expressed in figure terms in numerical terms right for example if i say in in quantity if i say number number of rejects right number of rejects right uh, so the rejects in production rejects in production the moment i say number of rejects yes it is quantitative non-financial information quantitative non-financial information you, you understand what i'm saying quantitative non-financial so there's quantitative financial and quantitative non-financial information okay so there are a number of mistakes, uh, as we indicated, that uh, as, as actually is indicated that there are a number of mistakes that uh, the uh, there are a number of mistakes that the uh, the finance professionals could make when analyzing quantitative information for insight. For example, presentation of information, right? So the choice of saying uh, maybe should we graph or chart may be inappropriate. For example, a graph may indicate dramatic changes, but only because of the scale that is chosen, right? That's so the presentation. So finance professionals, they end up distorting a lot of things should be distorted, might be distorted because of the presentation of information. <clears throat> Failure to evaluate the figures using a suitable comparator, right? Failure to evaluate the figures using a suitable comparator. Uh, or benchmark, failure to evaluate the figures using a suitable comparator or benchmark. So finance professionals may report an increase in sales of 20% on the last year, but this may indicate poor performance of the market grow by, uh, grew by 30% over the same period, you see. So that is failure to evaluate uh, the figures using suitable comparator. So that is uh, a common mistake. Again, that is the, so, and collection of data is another part uh, that we need to uh, look at uh, here. So that is uh, the collection of data. So an organization often uses sampling to collect data and establish uh, statistics, um, right? So however, it is difficult to collect a random sample and um, a sample that is big enough to be representative of the whole population, to be representatives of the whole what? To be representative of the whole population. So that is basically the, the, the issue. And then we look at what you call qualitative information. We're looking at quantitative. Now we are looking at qualitative. 
So qualitative information is information um, is information that is not normally uh, be expressed in numerical terms. So this is information that is not expressed in numerical terms. Information that is not expressed in numerical terms. So, uh, for example, when we talk about qualitative information, well, qualitative information is non-financial, purely non-financial, and cannot be expressed in numerical terms. For example, uh, we are talking about uh, employees. Um, if we look at, if the examiner says, can you tell us what are the uh, uh, qualitative non-financial factors that affect the organization, employees, customers, suppliers, they are not expressed in numerical terms, right? So that is qualitative factors. So those are qualitative what? So those are qualitative what? Those are qualitative uh, factors. So they are not, uh, uh, they are qualitative factors. So they are not expressed in numerical what? Numerical terms. So that is basically the point, guys. So let's look at, um, it says now here that uh, it is difficult to record and process data of qualitative nature, but quali of qualitative nature, but qualitative factors still need to be considered when making a decision. So when the organization is making a decision, the organization that actually making a decision would need to consider the qualitative factors uh, to say, okay, if it's an organization want to undertake a project, for example, we don't just consider to say whether the organization is going to make a profit or, or not. That is financial and that is quantitative, but we also should consider the qualitative. <clears throat> so the qualitative is um, these are other factors that are not financial and that are not expressed in numerical terms. For example, uh, the organization might consider the effect on the environment. Uh, this is qualitative. The organization may consider the legal effect. This is qualitative. What is the legal effect of the decision? Or what is the legal effect of the course of action that will be undertaken? Uh, and also considering the political effect, all right? What is the uh, political, what? What is the uh, political effect? The timing of the decision is also regarded as qualitative. Anything that is expressed, which is not, of course, uh, uh, in figure in numerical terms, or which is not in financial terms, is regarded as qualitative. So you need to differentiate between quantitative and qualitative. Okay, 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 guys. Um, it's very important that you need to know the difference and differentiate uh, between uh, that. Um, <clears throat> now, we look at uh, how the finance um, connect the different activities of the organization. So we have talked about this, guys. Um, I refer you to the first chapter. Uh, we have already looked at that, that the finance function does not work in an isolation. So the finance function does not work alone, right? Does not work in isolation. Rather, the contemporary finance function works with and alongside other departments or other function within the organization. So it actually helps to connect the different activities of the organization or the different activities that the organization performed. The reason why it connects all these activities in order to provide information, uh, to provide information and insight to other function and enabling them to create and preserve value. And it works with other function to shape how the, 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 the other functions creates and preserve value. It works with other function to achieve the desired organizational impact for this function. So it does not work alone. In order for us to satisfy the information to impact framework, the finance function needs to be able to connect all the activities. But all the activities are connected when you work with other departments. That is how this can be achieved. So other departments should be worked with in order to achieve this, right? So the finance function will communicate insights to influence stakeholders, 
getting value from financial and non-financial data in order to help the organization uh, to, example, make better future decisions, uh, enhance future operational efficiency, and better understand its customers. So that is basically more important of the use of financial and non-financial information to make better future decisions, enhance future operational efficiency, and better understand its what? And better understand its customers. So that is very important. So this is about information to impact framework. So you need to understand the information to impact framework, sources of information, different sources of information. It's very important to understand that. You need to understand uh, all the stages within the information to impact framework. You know, once you understand that, you understand this chapter very well. It's not a difficult chapter to understand, so you will understand this chapter very well. Anyone with any question, guys? Because uh, that actually brings me to the end of this chapter. Anyone with any question? Anyone with any uh, question? And uh, any question? Phineas, any question? Abraham, any question? That's the other question. Uh, no, I don't have any questions, sir. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, that actually brings us to the end of this. And um, Abraham, uh, you need to send me your email address. I requested it um, already. Um, you need to send me your email address because I've sent everyone uh, the recordings, uh, but I didn't have your email to send you the recordings of I what we've covered. You say? I have sent it. Okay. All right. Because uh, after every you know chapter covered, I need to send you the recording so that uh, whenever you want to go through it again and again, you can uh, go through the recording and again and again to make sure that you understand uh, the concept. So it is very important that you should be able to have the recordings. So that is very important. Um, all right, guys. I think that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, so in our next session, we are going to be looking at chapter three. We only have 11 chapters in this, uh, in, in, in for E1. So we are moving. We are already getting into chapter three already. And so, yeah, but one thing that I urge you guys, don't pile this work, right? As we go through a chapter, get time to revise your work, just go through it again so that you can have a better understanding of that chapter. Okay, guys? Uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Um, uh, let me ask you, Abraham, what time is it in Sierra Leone now? Is it the same as here? No, we are two hours behind. Oh, you are two hours behind. Uh, okay, so now it should be somewhere around what time now? It should be... 3.45 for now. Oh, uh, 3.45, oh, 3 so you are... Uh, okay, all right. No, that's fine. All right, guys. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, let's meet again in our next session. As for now, guys, bye. Let's meet again in our next session. Uh, tomorrow, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.